Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Today, I'm going to review the Viper Spectra P600 LED grow light. I'll unbox it, explain its features, and test its power consumption and light output. Let's get started. Viper Spectra provided me with two of these lights at no charge in exchange for my honest review. Last year, I switched to Sansi LED grow lights, which did a really good job for me, and I'll use them again this year. But like many of my fellow YouTube creators with gardening channels, I'm constantly approached to test new grow lights. I say no a lot, but I said yes to Viper Spectra. I purchased one of their previous generations of lights several years ago and had great results. I passed that light on to a friend last year, and it's still working great. I wanted to check out one of their newest models and compare results with my Sansi lights. The P600 is part of Viper Spectra's Pro Series. It's the most affordable in the series, with 2 foot by 2 foot coverage. I grow my seedlings on 2 by 4 foot tables, so two of these lights are perfect to cover one table. All six lights in the Pro Series have a similar design and features, with coverage up to 5 feet by 5 feet. Let's unbox. Viper Spectra shipped these lights directly to me. No outer box, just the two product boxes lashed together with strapping tape. Overall, grow light manufacturers haven't adopted premium packaging like other electronics. I was wowed by the packaging of the Output Frontier Studio monitors I recently purchased, including drawstring bags for each speaker. Here, there's just brown cardboard and styrofoam. It takes some of the fun out of unboxing, but at least it keeps costs down. I do wish companies would stop using styrofoam, which can't be easily recycled. After more fumbling, I finally extracted the light. It's much heavier than I expected. The body is all metal, with large aluminum heat sinks for cooling, instead of a noisy fan. The lighting elements are protected by a thick layer of clear silicone to keep water out. Not much else in the box. There's a hanger and power cord, a one-sheet user instructions and info card. I'll give you a closer look at these in a moment. The other light is identical to this one, so I'm not going to show you that unboxing. Now I'm attaching the hanger. I found it a little difficult to get the clips attached because the holes are not very close to the edge. And also because the clips and housing are both metal, I was afraid of scratching the bright green paint. The instructions include safety information and specifications. There are some suggestions on height, hours of use, and brightness settings, but I'm not sure how closely I'd personally adhere to them. I've seen these happy slash not happy cards with other products I've purchased. Basically, if you're happy, write an online review and post on social media. If you're not happy, don't do those things. Contact them privately. I've never dealt with their customer support, but hopefully they're as friendly, helpful, and responsive as promised. There's only one control on the light, a dimmer switch that cycles through 15% to 100% brightness. No on-off switch. Unless you're using an external switch, the light is on whenever it's plugged in. Here's the part that makes plants grow. There are four different types of LEDs. 3000K warm white, 5000K daylight, 660 nanometer deep red, and 730 nanometer infrared. The IR diodes may look like they aren't working because human eyes can't see light in that wavelength. Here's my state-of-the-art test lab, an old mic stand, a cutting mat, and our dining room table. I'm going to test power consumption and light output. The unit uses 11.7 watts at its lowest dimmer setting and around 94 watts at the max setting. That matches the specs. I don't have a pricey PAR meter meant to specifically measure output from grow lights, but I do have a simple light meter that takes readings in lux and foot candles, which I'm using today. I'm going to take the same readings I performed last year with the 100 watt Sansi light so that we can compare. All readings were taken at 100% brightness. Here are the results. Even though the Sansi and Viper Spectra lights use different technology, 
You'll see that the light output per watt measured 15 inches directly under the center of the lights is actually quite similar between the two. The Viper Spectral Light is quite a bit brighter, but at the expense of higher power consumption. Now, I'm not using these grow lights to grow plants to maturity, so I don't need the highest output lights for good results. I'll be comparing results between the Viper Spectra and Sansi lights throughout the seedling growing season, so check back for updates in the coming weeks. I planted my hot pepper seeds a few days ago, and soon I'll be ready to start transplanting seedlings and moving them down to the basement, where each of these lights will cover a 2 by 2 foot area with 36 plants. Oops, I guess I have a lot of stuff on these tables that needs relocation before that can happen. There's a lot of things here that used to be in my office prior to its recent makeover. Well, I guess it's good to be busy. If you'd like to try a Viper Spectra Pro Series light, you can use the code PRO7POTCLUB to get an extra 5% discount when you purchase any Pro Series light on Amazon and 8% discount when you purchase on viperspectra.com. Full details and links are in the video description. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our 7Pot Club logo and hot pepper related apparel and other merch at 7pot.club slash merch. If you'd like a free 7Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at 7pot.club slash card. And for even more 7Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7Pot Club, I'm Rob.